Hare Krishna. We can't fly without breaking our shell. When a bird is a baby bird inside a nest, it is living such a constricted existence and when it tries to come out, it tries to break its shell, that is no easy task. It actually requires a huge amount of effort to break its shell and it can be painful. Sometimes a little uh, part of the wing comes out and then the, the shell snaps back again and then its uh, wing might get cut by it and it is trapped, it can't go inside, it can't go outside, it has to laboriously force itself out. But eventually when it comes out, it actually uh, has the whole world, the huge sky in which to fly. And as compared to the vast sky and the vast world in which it can fly, its earlier life inside the shell is so pathetic, pathetically tiny. Now, if, now the struggle of going through the uh, the uh, of struggle of going through the uh, effort of breaking the shell is worthwhile. It's worthwhile not just because uh, there is such a wonderful result, but because even the process prepares one for the result. If the if someone outside breaks the shell and easily gets the bird come to come out, the bird comes out, but its wings and its body is not developed. And then it can't fly quickly and some a predator may come and just devour it. It will become a just a sitting duck, a helpless prey. So similarly we are all covered by the shells of various conditionings. You know, we have laziness, we have selfishness, we have various weaknesses within us which it keeps us constricted within our tiny shells. These don't allow us to perform effectively. These don't allow us to do justice to our talents. These don't allow us to achieve our potentials, material or spiritual. If we can break free from the shell of our conditionings, then even materially we can do many more wonderful things. I want to speak of spiritually. Spiritually we are souls. We are eternal parts of God and we are meant to fly in the sky of eternal love. We are meant to attain eternal happiness in loving and serving Krishna. But, the, but attaining that love requires giving up the conditionings that limit and constrict us. And overcoming them is a struggle, but it is a worthwhile struggle. Bhagavad Gita describes the nature of happiness in the mode of goodness. 18.37 states, that which tastes initially like poison but in the end is like nectar that is happiness in the mode of goodness Atma buddhi prasadajam It awakens our spiritual intelligence. So Krishna is saying over here that yes, there will be poison in the beginning but eventually there is nectar. And if we focus on the nectar, we will get it. Uh, then that will give us the impetus, the inspiration to keep moving even when we are feeling even when we are struggling. Actually speaking, the bird, when it is, uh, it, is uh, it is still in the infant stage, a small stage, inside the shell, it doesn't even know what is there outside. But still it feels as if a force from within, yes, I'm growing, I need to come out. And it comes out. Now fortunately for us, we do know from scripture and from the Guru and Sadhu, from the saints, what is there outside. No, so we can even meet saintly people and see how when they are free from material attachments, how fulfilling their life is. How 
glorious their contributions are, how they are flying in the sky of spiritual devotion and we get a we get it now uh, at least not only a knowledge by seeing them but we can also get glimpses of that when some occasionally we have spiritual experiences when our conditions fall apart when we sort of our consciousness temporarily breaks through our shell and we connect with Krishna and we get a relish, memorable, relishable spiritual experiences. So those can give us the inspiration, the motivation to keep moving onwards. And if we endure the initial poison, the poison of breaking the shell, then we can relish the nectar of actualizing our potential, materially and spiritually. By enduring the poison of initial discipline, of initial resist fighting against our weaknesses, against our anarthas, against our laziness, against our greed, whatever, gradually we will march onwards, we will be able to actualize our potentials and fly high in the sky of wonderful achievements, culminating life's supreme achievement, achievement of eternal happiness and eternal love for Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna.